notice what you care about. Assume that many others share your dreams. Be brave enough to start a conversation that matters. Talk to people you know. Talk to people you don't know. Talk to people you never talk to. Be intrigued by the differences you hear. Expect to be surprised. Treasure curiosity more than certainty. Invite in everyone who cares to work on what's possible. Acknowledge that everyone is expert about something. Know that creative solutions come from new connections. Remember, you don't fear people whose story you know. Real listening always brings people closer together. Trust that meaningful conversations change your world. Rely on human goodness. Stay together. And that's my Margaret Wheatley. I'd like to invite you again and a warm welcome to all of you. Um, race is not always easy to talk about, as you know. Racism is everywhere. Race is on the news constantly, as, as uh, Tark was talking about. It takes courage to speak up, come together, and to walk against our differences. Without talking and listening to one another, we really can't go any place. So I just want to say that, again, my name is Pamela, and I was at a Black Women's Liberation Meeting many years ago, and the leader of the um, workshop, Bottle of Love, said, when you go home, I want you to find a white ally to work with. And it was Sarah. So Sarah lived in my neighborhood, and I asked her, would she be an ally to me? Tonight, we're going to be talking about what it means to be an ally. Thank you. I also want to welcome you all to be here this evening. Um, I, I want to say just a little something about what Pamela just shared because I knew Pamela, we had worked together, we were friends. But when she asked me to be her ally, my first question was like, what does that mean? And I think we've had to figure out a how over probably the last 15 years. And sometimes I haven't known, and sometimes I've made mistakes. Sometimes I've been helpful. Um, I can say Pamela's been an ally to me too, because there's times when I've opened up conversations about race as a white person, and other white people have gotten pissed off at me, and I didn't like that I was bringing it up. And Pamela would get my back and say, no, no, we need to talk about this. And, um, or vice versa. So I think this um, conversation, it's not just about allies, whites, and blacks. We're going to talk more about it. But um, we're here because we all need to work on this together. In my exploration, I'm exploring African culture. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and what it is like, because we're trying to show that life is being abused on every level from our earth to us as people. Right. Right. And I feel like we as Africans are the poster child of exploitation. So it becomes a black and white mentality, and that's how you separate people. So white right. people also have been stripped of culture just as much as African people. Stay. You say what you say, yeah, stripped of culture? Stripped. Oh, they strip. I say, or oh, I say, culture. I say, ain't no culture about white people. Because <laughs> right. right. they've been stripped of it. It's a. It's right. Like they've been bullied into this mentality of superiority, and everybody else that's labeled black is inferior. Right. So I'm just. I just want to ask you, how do you feel about that mentality, superiority, inferiority, and erasing that mentality to stop calling us black? That's the only question I wanted to ask you right now. Because I don't like being called black, I want to be called an African American. Like, I'm offended if you call me black, only after learning my culture. Because, like, two years ago, I was black power. You know what I'm saying? Black is beautiful. Two years ago, I was doing this. But after learning about Paul Robeson, I'm a his 
fight with McCarthyism and how he just blacklisted and blacklisted, meaning this group of people cannot survive, so we're going to call them black and we're going to be white. Um, that's when I grew to another level is I want to be known as African. So how do you feel about what I just said? Well, we're entitled to your own opinion. And why would you consider yourself an Amer uh, African American? Because, see, me, I always said the same thing, an African American. But the reason why I don't consider myself an American, even when I was born here, why would I consider myself with the same flag when we got hung, lynched, and burnt? And this country was actually called the Pondemiji until crackers came and stole it by raping, stealing, all that. Right on Thanksgiving. Why right think that when the natives got high off that kush, it was game. And then white people looked at them, said, thanks for giving, shook the hand, and look what happened. Slaughtered and raped and stole. But soon we talk about something like that, like I said before. Ignorant black, ignorant African people that's not that's ashamed of being who they are, they'll look down at you saying you need to stop being racist. I'm like, damn, you say I'm being racist, I'm speaking on facts. But you don't want to acknowledge that. But look how when, if you take a look about how a person of this color was talking about everything that we'll be talking about now, they'll say we're crazy. Hey, I just want to say that it's not, I want to say that it's not just white people being allies to um, Black people. It's also white people being allies to white people. And the reason why I say that is because but let a person of half and half that's light skinned it, like Jesse Williams. Him for prime example. Look how when he talked about that on the BET Awards. Damn, all of a sudden, most of black people won't listen because he's half and half. Even his mother said the same thing, and she's white. That's like when she said, I'm glad you really know who you are, that, that you're more than what I am. Because but how did his speech, did you hear his speech? Did it resonate with you when he spoke? I know I heard, I know the backlash that you talking about, but did it resonate with you? Did you accept it being so he's a light-skinned, well, black person in America or African-American, however you want to label it? Yeah, of course, like, because he's part of us. Even his dad is black and his mother's white. Even, I could be against something like that, but his mother that's white, she knows what her ancestors did to us. And I said, damn. And that's the one thing, because I had a friend that I knew from this place that I went to up at uh, Hazleton, which is um, Job Corps. And he actually told me he wished he wasn't white. And then one day, this was before I woke up to the culture, he was saying, because yo, my people really did your people dirty, man. And I wish I wasn't white because his father abused him because he didn't want to be part of a, a racist clan. So his mom and his father was abusing him, so he ran away. And that's why he said he can't stay in his own kind. And he said he just can't wait for his own kind to crumble and be all put off this earth. And he said he wish he never was white because what he's seen what his ancestors did be doing to us. Uh, hey. White and black is a mentality. It's not a reality. Like, you're not, you're black. Your clothes that you have on you right now are black. Your skin is brown. We were labeled black under yeah, label was black. oppression and colonialism and Correct. rape of this land, how they stole it from Native Americans and said it was America. When you said the, the original name was black, it's, they're not the United States of, of America. Uh. Just like Africa isn't the original name of Africa. You know what I'm saying? Nope. So it's all the state of mind that's been put on people. Um, you have some right. That's where I'm exploring, and I'm so happy that you shared everything that you shared with me mm -hmm. because you are our young future. How old are you? Do you mind sharing your age? Thirty. Thirty. Right. You're still our youth. You're still our future. You know what I'm saying? And when you have babies, you don't even have children yet, correct? No. Right. So you're building our future. You know what I'm saying? So it's just important for me to be able to connect with you and hear your voice in this exploration also. So when I do look to bring us together, I can say, okay, this is what I've seen, you know what I'm saying? And can we connect on this level? You know what I'm saying? And I do believe we as a people have to heal 
ourselves first as a culture. Right. Um, and then let others come into the culture as we see fit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because I'm tired of white people mentality, period. It's a delusion of being superior to of somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And I actually agree. I sitting on this side with you. <laughs> in the camera. Um, do you mind if I lean on you? Because then the mic right here. You're a black sister. Of course you can lean on me. Thank you. I'm an African sister. And oh, and I just want to say, you said, why would I um, be an African American? Um, not because of the flag, but because this is the country that I was born in. And if I could change that flag and would it symbolize the people, right. I would. But being who I am, I know I was born in this country, so I just say African American. Not to be offensive to anybody, but that's just who right. I am. Um, and that's the label I'd rather accept than being called black. You know? Yeah, I'd rather, um, like I said, African by blood. Right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and the thing is, just like when I tell people all the time, just like I love my African people out in Africa, cause I actually want to go travel down there too. Yeah. And the people that's actually alive right now mm -hmm. are the people of ancient Kemet, which is Asar, Aset, and Haru. Right. They think they did. But you may think I'm talking crazy, but they still alive. They crying out, telling us to wake up. Yes, yes, yes. Because when I see it, yes, I cry every time too. Yes. And once when I know the rest of the people's wake up, yes. And white supremacy, mm -hmm. be your first worst fucking nightmare. Yeah. When I kill all you bitches. Yeah, but we ain't gonna. But see, it's not even about killing them. It's about killing that mentality. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, because fuck them. They don't rule me. I don't want to be like them. I'm never going to act like them. Fuck them. You feel me? Um, I just want to say you smell good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and it feels good laying on a big, strong African bro. Oh my gosh, it feels so good. But um, we need more of this. I mean, we need more of these conversations, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I'm looking to build a council. An African based council where we get back to our culture. Everything you just said, the Kimmy and what else? Ancient Kimmy. Yeah, we need to get back to that. So, some kind of way, let's really do this for real. Like, not play about it. But you know it. how white people, I'm going to tell you how white people are really laughing at us right now. The name brand clothes that we wear that comes from them. I know. The Gucci, the Louis Vuitton. I know, the Holy Jeans. Yeah, I know. Because, I mean, I have a few family members that say, oh, you talk about this, man, you need to get out stuff. You can't believe everything that you hear. Look at Michael Kors, a faggot and a racist. Fuck you. Yeah. Too. But I'm gay too. So. You go with me? Yeah. Oh shit. I go. I'm yeah all the way, all the way. Oh shit. Free ah, free ah, all that. Me one day try three. <laughs> like for sure. With a brother like you, for sure. Like I'm for real. Like don't play with it. Like, but that's another story and another. Are you serious? Story. One thing I thought about while we were having this conversation. I didn't look at Alicia as a person of color. I looked at her as another human being. We are all human beings. And we should stop looking at somebody and say, oh, we don't have anything to do with that African-American person. We are all human beings. And we have to learn how to get along together. It's not easy to do. We've been trying to do this for hundreds of years. We're all smart, intelligent people. You just look at your neighbor as a human being and don't say she's a person. Thank you, Bob. If you identify as African American, can you please stand up? Look around. Thank you, have a seat. If you identify as Latino, can you please stand up?